Greg Rapp. I am the senior pastor at First United Methodist Church in Hanover, Pennsylvania, and I welcome you to our online worship today. Uh, if I were to ask you the question, what has God called you to do with your life? Do you know how you'd answer that? Sometimes we think that a calling from God is like we hear it in the movies, this big, booming voice of God that echoes and reverberates across the, uh, through the neighborhood, and you know exactly that it's God, and maybe you're thinking, well, I've never heard anything like that, so I guess I'm not called. Well, not true. Uh, we are all called to serve the God who loves us, 
who created us, who sent his son to die for us, who forgives us, and who offers us eternal life. We all have a part to play in what God is doing in this world. Today, we're going to explore that together. The fact that we are all called, and there's a lot of different ways that we hear and know what God has called us to do. So I hope you're ready. It is time to worship. threshold smooth enough to be no stumbling block to children, nor to straying feet, but rugged and strong enough to turn back evil's power. Make the people inside this house a compassionate people, ready and willing to receive every person you place in our midst, even if they don't look or act or talk like us. God, make the door of this house a place of love and acceptance, and make it a gateway to your kingdom. Amen.
please join me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. everybody welcome to worship I am so glad you're here today I want to talk about whipped cream I bet you guys know all kinds of food that tastes better with whipped cream like maybe strawberries pancakes I have a friend that really likes whipped cream in her coffee. Um, I also have another friend that would take this can of whipped cream and just do this in their mouth and, and be really happy. You know, one thing about whipped cream, sometimes there's some awesome food that I really like, like pumpkin pie. But when I'm really full, I don't really want it. But if somebody puts some whipped cream on it, guys, I probably want the biggest piece ever, like maybe even half the pie. Whipped cream makes something awesome even better. So I'm gonna put this off to the side because I'm gonna talk about it a little later, but I wanna talk a little bit about today's Bible story. In today's story, you have Peter, Andrew, James, and John, and they're fishing because that's their job. And along comes Jesus and says, hey, follow me. And they drop everything they do, and they go with Jesus. Like, wow, why would they do that? Well, I think I know. I think that Jesus reminded them how awesome God is. Just like the whipped cream. Jesus reminds us right now today how awesome God is. And we can see God's awesomeness everywhere we look. Jesus is pretty cool. He is like the whipped cream. He helps us to see God's peace, God's love, God's joy, and God's amazing awesomeness. Hmm, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Mmm. We can be like Jesus and we can share, <laughs> we can share the peace of God everywhere we go. Let's pray. We just thank you, God, for Jesus. Thank you for helping him to remind us how awesome our God is and help us to receive his love, his joy, and his peace. Amen. Hey, guys, remember, wash those hands, say those prayers, because germs and Jesus are everywhere. Bye. Our scripture lesson for today is Mark 1, 14 through 20. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. I had a football coach in high school who really knew how to motivate people. Anytime we weren't giving our absolute best effort, he knew what to say, and it would get us going. 
Sometimes he would appeal to our sense of pride by saying, come on guys, I know that you're better than that, let's go. We wanted to prove him right. Sometimes he would just shame us when he'd say, come on, my grandmother can hit harder than that, and she's been dead for 10 years. Sometimes he would even use theatrics, like the time he had 20 boxes of cream puffs delivered to our practice field with a card that said it was from our opponents. And the card read, cream puffs for the cream puffs. Now, we all knew darn well that Coach Turner sent these cream puffs, but nobody likes being called a cream puff. So in a rage, we smashed all 20 boxes of them all over the field. And any time you weren't moving as fast uh, as you should have been, he'd always say the same thing. Come on, do you need a special invitation? Let's go. You know, like if you're the slowest guy out of the locker room, he'd say it. Come on, do you need a special invitation? Let's go. If you were the last guy to put your helmet on after a break time, he'd say it. Come on, do you need a special invitation? Let's go. Now, I often thought about how silly it would be if we actually received written invitations on our lockers, you know, like wedding invitations, just because we weren't moving fast enough. You've probably gotten wedding invitations before, or a birthday invitation, those fancy little card and fancy little envelope written with flowers and calligraphy. I can imagine opening it up and it's saying, the Port Allegheny Gators varsity football team requests the honor of your presence on the practice field as we prepare to play the Countersport Falcons. I bring it up because that is exactly what Peter and Andrew and James and John received from Jesus. A special invitation. They were fishermen, minding their own business, cleaning their nets, fishing for fish by the side of the sea. And Jesus walked right up to them, looked them in the eye, and he said, follow me. And according to the story, they dropped their nets, they jumped out of the boat, and they followed now that was a special invitation. There was no ambiguity or uncertainty about it. Jesus sought them out, he chose them by name, face to face, and he told them exactly what he wanted them to do. Now as we read through the scriptures, we find that God has given a lot of special invitations to a lot of people over the years. Moses heard from God through a burning bush. Young Samuel heard God's voice calling him in the temple late at night. Joseph heard the angel Gabriel talk to him through a dream. Elijah, the prophet, heard God in silence. Jesus heard the Father every day in prayer because God speaks. God is still speaking. The problem that we sometimes have with stories like these is that we assume that if we've never heard God call out our name in the middle of the night, like Samuel, or if we've never had Jesus come to us, poke us in the chest, you know, like those old army recruiting posters where Uncle Sam says, I want you, then we simply assume we haven't been called by God to do anything. And that's not true. We are all called. We are all called. As followers of Jesus, we already have our marching orders. We have the Great Commission, which is found in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded. We know that. So we can just do that. Or as Coach Turner used to say, come on, do you need a special invitation? Let's go. Let's make some disciples. We also have the great commandment, which is Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. And it reads, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all of your soul. And this is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, he said it. We know that, so we can just go ahead and do it. Or as Coach Turner used to say, come on, do you need a special invitation? Let's go. Let's love God and let's love other people. Come on, chop, chop. We also have what many people like to call the great requirement from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? He said it. 
We know that, so we can just do it. Or, as Coach Turner used to say, and you could probably do it with me by now, come on, do you need a special invitation? Let's go. Let's do some justice. We also have one more that, that I like to call the great surrender. It's Luke chapter 9, verse 23, when Jesus said, If any wish to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. Now we know that. He said it. We can just do it. Or as Coach Turner used to say, Come on, do you need a special invitation? Let's go. Let's take up our crosses every day. Let's follow him. See, we don't need a special invitation to do this stuff. We don't need a special invitation to serve in this way. We don't need God to call out our name and poke us in the chest and send us on our way. We don't require a special voice from heaven or in a burning bush to respond to this calling that God places upon all of us who follow. We love God. We love our neighbor as ourselves. We join with others to learn how to follow Jesus. We generously share whatever we have with God and with other people. And First Church, you are really good at that one. We serve God by helping other people. We share this good news of Jesus with people who need to hear it. We are all called and commanded to live this kind of life as followers of Jesus Christ. And we can do all of that right now without hearing anything further from God. And that would be enough. But that being said, though, as our scripture reveals, sometimes God will give us special assignments that require a personal invitation from God. Now imagine that. We are singled out by the creator of the universe and given a special part to play in God's plan for creation. That's not just an incredible honor, but it's also an awesome responsibility. We want to get this right. Amen? However God contacts us to reveal the assignment, every call, though, has the same requirements. First, the call of God must be heard. I talked about young Samuel, who was called as a prophet as a young boy. He heard a voice calling his name in the middle of the night in 1 Samuel chapter 3. Moses, in Exodus, distinctly heard God's voice through a burning bush. James and John could not miss Jesus standing there right in front of them. Second thing, the call must be recognized as a call from God. Now Moses knew exactly who this voice was. So did Joseph and Elijah and Isaiah. Samuel, again, was just a kid when uh, God called and spoke to him, and he didn't know what it was. It was the old priest, Eli, who explained to him what this voice was and told him what he should do. Because sometimes we need the perspective of other people to recognize the voice of God that we're hearing. And lots of people, like Samuel, find themselves awake in the middle of the night, unable to sleep, and it's because of that voice. Third, once we recognize this stirring as a call from God, that call must be claimed as ours. In the original Mission Impossible TV show, the secret assignments were delivered by way of a tiny tape recorder. And after the voice on the tape outlined the mission, it would always say, this mission, should you choose to accept it, now, it may be God asking, but we're not slaves. We are still free to choose whether or not we're going to accept this invitation or not. We can refuse, or we can get busy accomplishing God's will, but some response is required. We hear the call, we recognize the call, we claim the call. And when you claim a call from God, you choose to give God your undivided attention. Now, lastly, once we claim it, that call demands a response. That's why we celebrate today in the story of the fishermen. The most important part of the story is that they obeyed. They rearranged their schedules, they dropped what they were doing, and they followed. Obedience is always the proper response to a true call from God. As Christian writer Henry Blackaby writes, he says, quote, we must make major adjustments in our lives to join God in what God is already doing. You see, God's call becomes the clear focus and purpose of our lives. Our plans and our wishes and our desires, they take a back seat to God's. And obedience takes effort and energy and commitment and focus. So whether it's the great commandment to love God with everything that we are and love our neighbors as ourselves, 
or whether it's the Great Commission to go and make disciples of every nation, whether it's the great requirement to pursue justice, kindness, and humility, or the great surrender, denying ourselves and following Christ, we are, in that obedience, living at the center of God's will. Like when Jesus prayed, not my will be done, but thine. And when we are already living at the center of God's will, wanting what he wants, it's that much easier to recognize God's voice when it comes. It's that much easier to say yes to the myriad of special assignments and missions that God may choose for us. And the best response is always obedience. Losing ourselves in the wisdom and the work of God which brings us all one step closer to the beautiful new world that God is creating. So how about it? Are you hearing a special invitation from God and you're not sure it's from God? Give me a call this week. Send me an email. Let's talk about it. Let's see what God is doing in your life. You want to be more part of what God's doing, but you know you've not heard that kind of voice? That's fine. We don't need a special invitation. Because God has already let us know about this loving, amazing, kingdom-building work of making disciples, loving God, loving our neighbor, striving for justice, taking up our cross every day, and following Jesus. May this week be a major step forward for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have been praying for our nation uh, here in the United States of America uh, for several weeks. <laughs> Who am I kidding? We've been doing it forever. Uh, but we want to continue to pray. Uh, this past week has seen uh, a transition into a new presidential administration. But all of our, our challenges and, and, and problems as a nation are still upon us. So we would like to pray uh, for our leaders and the new administration. We want to pray and continue for those who are uh, experiencing loss or pain or suffering uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, whether it's the physical effects of the virus or whether it's the economic effects of the shutdown and the slowdown. Um, speaking of, of COVID, um, we are hoping, and I hear me say hoping, that uh, we will be able to reopen our Sunday morning worship um, by the beginning of uh, February, which is just a few weeks away. Uh, we've stayed in contact with uh, community health officials. We've stayed in contact with Hanover Hospital, and it appears from hospitalizations that the surge that we saw after Thanksgiving is starting to come back down. The number of hospitalizations is dropping. So please keep in your prayers that this surge continues to drop because we would very much like to begin the new month of February by reopening on Sunday morning and being together for those uh, who are willing and wanting uh, to come out. Uh, so I want to continue to, I'm going to start our time of prayer with um, uh, a prayer for national well-being. And this is from my, my book collection of, of Christian prayer that I enjoy praying from. Uh, and then we're going to close this time of prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give thanks for life and the experience life brings us. We thank you, Lord, for our joys, sorrows, trials, failures, and triumphs. Above all, we thank you for the hope that we have in Christ, that we shall find fulfillment in him. We praise you, Lord, for our country, its beauty, the riches it has for us, the gifts that it showers upon us. We thank you for your peoples, the gift of languages we speak, the variety of races and backgrounds and cultures that we have, the cultural heritage that we cherish and share, and the latent possibilities that are for our country to be great. Grant that we accept these gifts with thankfulness, and use them for the good of all humanity and to bring glory to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. We pray today, Lord, for the outgoing Trump administration, thanking them for their service, and wishing them well in their future endeavors. We pray for the now inaugurated Biden administration and we ask, Lord, for unity 
and healing the deep and at times angry divides that we find between us as citizens. As we shared, O oh God, in our message today, that we are all called to the great commandment, to love you, the Lord our God, with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, but also to love our neighbor as ourselves. And we know, Lord, that our neighbor takes a lot of forms different from ourselves. As Paul writes that in Christ Jesus there is no male nor female, Jew nor Greek, slave nor free. In Christ Jesus there is no black or white, Mexican or Canadian or Russian or American. We know, Lord God, that there is no liberal or conservative in Christ Jesus. There are all those who love so help each of us, Lord, despite our similarities and differences, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves in the weeks, in the days, in the months to come. Help us, Lord, to love our neighbors. And that word love, Lord, it means more than just having a warm feeling for someone. We know and we ask you, help us to treat all people with kindness and compassion and respect. To agree all of us for the need for truth and justice. But also the need to walk humbly before you, our God, and with one another. We continue to pray, Lord, for all those who are suffering the devastating effects of this COVID-19 illness. This past week, Lord, our nation held a memorial service for the 400,000 people who have died. Our church rang its bell this past Wednesday in honor and in memory of those folks and in solidarity with the rest of our nation as we pray and work towards the eradication and the control of this disease through the vaccination effort. Lord, this message about call also is about our own walk with you. And so we want to each of us offer you our forgiveness, our, our confession of our sins and our mistakes, seeking your forgiveness. We know that Christ died while we were yet sinners, and that's proof of your undying love toward us all, and that all we need do is confess our sins, and you are faithful and just, and you will forgive us. But may that change be more than just the fact that you are willing to forgive us. By your Holy Spirit, create in us a clean heart, O oh God that we can bury our sin and our past, that we can step forward as newer, cleaner, and holier people. Give us your guidance in this week to come, O oh God. How shall we serve you in our families? How shall we serve you in our neighborhood, in our workplaces, in our schools? Because we know that we are all called to serve you and your coming kingdom. All of this, Lord, we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray using this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to thank you for worshiping with us, and I want to thank you for all the ways in which you have continued to support the ministries of First Church financially uh, across the miles. Uh, if you have never given to us remotely, I want to give you a little, uh, a little some tips and some, some instructions on how you can do that, and we would greatly appreciate your financial support in our ministry. Uh, first would be that you can write a check out to First United Methodist Church of Hanover, and you can mail it to our church office. It's 200 Frederick Street, Hanover, PA, 17331. Or you can call our church office and set up electronic giving so that your bank sends the money automatically to the church's bank. And you can call us at our church number 717 637 
1574 uh, and tell Julie, who will answer the phone, that you'd like to set up electronic giving and she will get you in touch with Holly, our financial secretary, who can make that happen for you. Or, if you're a little more uh, independent, you want to do this on your own, you can go to our church website, click on the Giving tab up in the top of the page, and you will find a program there called Easy Tithe. And with it, you can make your gift online using a personal debit or credit card. Uh, again, I want to thank you for the extra gifts that have been rolling in uh, for the Pastor's Discretionary Fund, um, the kindness that you continue to make possible. Uh, I've been telling you little stories uh, every week about what you've done. Um, you have fed hungry people this past week. You've helped a member of our congregation uh, who wasn't sure how to get his car back on the road uh, to get it back on the road uh, so, so he can go to work and, uh, and earn uh, his, his paycheck. Uh, there are so many other needs in the neighborhood around us, and I just want to thank you for the ways in which you have given a tangible sign of God's love. So however you are giving or whoever you choose to give, allow me a moment to just pray over the offerings that we give Christ. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we want to thank you for the generosity that you have shown to each and every one of us. Also, Lord, we, we want to offer our gifts to you and we ask that you accept and bless and multiply each and every gift. Use and direct them for the upbuilding of your kingdom right here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. today, but uh, was also busy behind the camera making sure that everything was just so. We want to thank uh, Director of Music Janice Wagner and the Agape Ringers uh, who shared uh, the special music today for Fawn Garrett, our organist, who accompanied us in all that we do. And I want to also thank one of the most unsung heroes of First Church during this COVID time, and that is Wayne Topper. Wayne Topper is kind of our technical, digital, electronic expert who has been been doing all of the editing and all of the putting the fine touches on these worship services and then getting them onto the internet so that we can uh, 
enjoy them week in and week out. So Wayne, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts for everything that you do. And from the bottom of our hearts, I want to thank each and every one of you who are worshiping with us today for what you are doing to make a difference in this world, for what you are doing to, to represent Jesus Christ in this world, to let the world know by your example that Jesus is all about love and service and sacrifice, truth and justice and service that, and, and holiness. Thank you for what you do. And now I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit as each of us goes now in his peace. Have a great week, everybody. Keep this world in your prayers, and we'll see you next time. Amen. Thank you.